Hi guys, my name is Sean Boerg. I live here in Swaziland with my wife Nicole and daughter Cedar. Uh, we've lived in Swaziland for three years now. Uh, we came here as missionaries and I spend my time uh, especially working uh, with local farmers. Uh, and I've got two of my own chicken growers now uh, working with pastured poultry. Uh, and those skills that I, I learned from lamppost have proved to be invaluable to me here. Um, some of the things that we're doing that I've done since being here, I've built uh, the chicken tractors, I built the brooders, uh, I put together uh, our own a friend's cold room, and we do slaughtering also. Um, all things that I learned at Lamp Post, uh, start to finish. Um, this, I've been able to connect with uh, Seasway and Cibaciso on uh, levels that I would have otherwise been able to. Uh, I've been afforded, you know, as many hours as I can possibly handle per day being with them. As a uh, farming is a seven day a week thing. Uh, so I see Seasway and CBC so uh, seven days a week for hours and hours and hours and hours. Sorting through every imaginable problem, imaginable problem with their chickens, with their sales, with transport. Um, and then getting into their family business and sorting out those kinds of issues um, and uh, now as their business grows the more money more problems uh, and their problems are expanding into uh, all areas of their lives um, jealousy in their family jealousies in their communities um, uh, conflict between husbands and wives uh, and uh, um, you know how to spend money. Uh, people are coming around because they think that they've got money now. So how do you handle people who are hanging around you because they think that you're rich? Um, so uh, it, it's uh, starting a business has been a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be, and it involves a lot more areas of uh, people's people's lives than I thought it was going to. Um, so it's been a, a very dynamic process, and uh, I'm glad that uh, I've done it the way that I've done it, that they had to grow at my homestead, uh, where I've been able to have a long-term involvement in their businesses uh, and in their lives. Because uh, I think that as their businesses are growing, the, the physical element of their business is taking off, and it's very successful. But what's uh, now impeding their progress and stands to uh, tear down all the work that they've done is their spiritual well-being. Uh, uh, with all those things that in their communities, the jealousies, um, their own poverty mindsets that sometimes affect them and hold them back, uh, um, and some of their traditional beliefs that hold them back uh, from success and being there to mentor them through all of these changes in their lives that are taking place. Uh, mm. Oh, <laughs> Cash, mobile, and business.
ni la kola gusasa. Ma pupu am aksasa ni plan lam laksasa. Gutse le business i kule i tenga i moto. I kone go hambisa ni tenga setin kuku i tenga wene ti kashani. Mwale le paisi ni al kone go hamba i tenga wene ti kashani. Mbawalo go business ya mi akubega ya kule i yanz. Funa ngate mwa. Ema hoho mfuna abeng eight. Ema hoho ame pinze futi na sisi kule akulu akubega afike kwa ten. I've learned as much about myself as I have about them, uh, and I think we've had quite a sharing uh, in our relationships. Um, uh, a quick explanation of the the business. Um, sees what came to me some time ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, we met. I was taking him physical therapy, and every day he spent his time convincing me that he wanted to raise chickens. And I was saying, no, you can't do it. It's really difficult. There's no money in it. Um, and eventually one day, I, he, he wore me down. And I said, fine, we're going to try it. Whatever. We'll give it a go. I know how to do this, so let's do it this way. I built some chicken tractors and um, a brooder, and we got going. Uh, and it's been an incredibly impactful thing for Seasway and his family. Um, Seasway is uh, in connecting with Seasway and connecting Seasway with chickens um, has since connected Seasway with the rest of his community. Um, he's given, and <coughs> he feels, uh, I think, or at least he acts like he has value. Um, he walks with confidence and people treat him uh, like he's a member of the community. For the first six months I was here, I never saw Seasway. He didn't exist. Now, uh, he makes a trip between his house and mine four times a day sometimes. Uh, he walks to church. He refused to even take the wheelchair that I got him to go places. Um, people stop by to talk with him. People stop by just to help him. They'll see him out in the field and they'll, they'll come in and say, no, let, let me help you put the feed. Um, the neighbor who's lived here for 20 years, <clears throat> right next door to Seasway, came to me and said, didn't, didn't you know that Seasway can't uh, wash his hair and cut his toenails? I said, yeah, I did know. He said, well, somebody's got to do it. I, I, he said, I guess I have to do it. Um, it took 20 years for him to make that uh, connection. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, I, I think that in giving Seasway something to do, to tend, um, to make a living, to provide for himself, to be like everybody else around him, <clears throat> has uh, Im impacted his life in uh, more ways than I have time to tell you here. Uh, and Sibisiso and his wife are working together, um, and uh, improve, and it's improved their family life. They. They come here together with their children every single day uh, on the bicycle and the trailer and come here and spend eight to ten hours a day tending chickens and spending family time uh, in between chores. And they work with their money together and they raise the chickens together, they sell together, they uh, both share communication. Um, with customers and uh, yeah, it's their business, it's their family business um, and that was something that uh, I had never thought about until we started getting into this business that uh, oh, what about ministering to a whole family not just to the husband or to the wife you know, male empowerment, female empowerment how about family empowerment <clears throat> Uh, and it's empowered their family and now coming into this they have a daughter that's going into their her first school year and this year that they have they have the way to pay the school fees to buy the uniforms already putting the money away to buy those things <clears throat> and prepare um, they, they they walk happily when we met them they were uh, one of the poorest families in the community, he and Seasway both, and now they, in the last year, they've become uh, 
middle income for their community. Um, and it's been really great to see them grow that way. Thank you.